Hey, it's Dan McDonald here, and this is the bug out bag video. I put this bug out bag together, I don't know, five or six months ago, and sealed it up and haven't even looked at it. So I don't even remember what I bought or what is in this bag, but I'm about to go camping. So this video is um, just actually very real because I can't even remember what I put in here, and I need to do an assessment before I head out into the uh, forest. So let's just take a look. Let's see what we got. We'll open the top first and we've got, oh cool, oh yeah, this is a little survival knife. High, good high quality brand. Super sharp, it's a K-Bar. I just got the small one. I didn't think I'd need a huge one. I might regret it later if I'm attacked by a bear <laughs> and I need that extra inch. Um, but yeah, this is just a survival knife. Razor sharp, K-Bar. Super high quality. Uh, and then I've got a... Ooh, cool. A Gerber saw. A good for building a shelter or whatever. Uh, these... Um, Blades are pretty sharp. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to have to do any super heavy lifting, but I'm also not going to bring like a buck saw out into the woods with me either. And this actually has a replacement blade as well with a smaller, finer tooth. So that's going to be useful if ever needed. Here is a hatchet sog. It's very special type of hatchet. Useful for many different things. And finally, oh cool. I didn't even remember this. <laughs> All this, I don't remember any of it. This is a Leatherman. Super, super high tech. I think it was like very expensive. I was like, okay, if you're out there and it's the end of the world, you better get the super high quality with, uh, you know, screwdriver, whatever, can opener, the whole, the whole deal. Super light, heavy duty. Leatherman. Got to have a Leatherman, right? And that's that. Another top. Let's see what we got here. Another hatchet, of course. <laughs> this is a Bear Grylls hatchet. This one's more, obviously you can see. That's a more regular small handheld chopper. So in case there ever needs to be a shelter built or whatever. Uh, here are a couple of life straws, a water emergency. This here's an interesting story. I've been uh, ca I've been carrying this shirt around for over 25 years. This white shirt um, because white is good to protect you. Well, it's, if you're cold, you can warm up with a long sleeve white shirt, and if you're sunburned, you can also cover up with the white long sleeve shirt. And I just kept it around um, as an emergency shirt. So then I've got. Um, a toothbrush, some um, floss, uh, extra pair of socks, and um, an extra pair of shorts, also brand new. And then I've also got a head scarf slash, you know, um, it's just one of those. It's just like a tube. I'm not going to pull it out or anything, but it's just like a tube that's a multi-use kind of head warmer or neck warmer or anything like that. Okay, so that's that. Now for the good stuff. I don't know what the heck's in here. I know I have a tent and a sleeping bag, but the one thing I don't have is food, but it's it's actually fairly light. All of this together so far is probably only maybe 30 pounds. So I've got about another 10 pounds left for food and stuff and a lot of extra space. So what I've got here is I've got a, 
um, compression sack, a bunch of bungee cords. I've got a, um, I don't even know what I got. I got a headlamp, bungee cords, and a bunch of straps. And then I've also got a, um, this is a, uh, it's a, <laughs> a crackhead's dream. That's what it is. <laughs> it's a, um, a gigantic, like, torch lighter. So that's good to have. Let's move on. Double, you know, double wrapped in plastic. Just keep everything, you know. Uh, here is a camp pillow. So it goes real small. And then when you pull it out, it expands. I always, I never, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. So you don't go out camping without a tarp, without a real thick, heavy duty uh tarp this is an eight by ten which is about as minimum as you can you want to have you don't want to have like the six by eight that's ridiculous you'll get wet at the corners of your tent but the eight by ten is small enough but also big enough to secure um dryness because when you're in survival conditions the most important thing is a good night's sleep i've learned that you can go for days or weeks without food you won't be strong and you will go through like detoxification and purging and weakness and most people think they're starving after third the third day so they start eating whatever you know each other but you can go for several weeks without food but you will go crazy within just a few days without good sleep so sleep is kind of the most important uh, thing to take care of that's why i do have really it's based on um more on a, a good night's sleep with the bug out bag than any other principle that's just been my experience over time you can find a lot of wild foods you can live off the sorrel or um, all kinds of little bitter herbs and things like that to keep your body full of you know organic minerals so that you can at least you know function um but uh, like i said a good night's sleep is the key because that's the thing that'll drive you to your end quicker than anything else just you know two or three bad nights sleep in a row uh i think all of you know what i'm talking about when you miss one night of sleep imagine and i've done everyone's done it they've had a couple two or three bad nights sleep some people have insomnia but you know that drives you nuts you need a good night's sleep to restore the power of your brain now here's the largest thing i think in here and it's uh the sleeping bag which i did not put into the compression because i don't want to smash it down and ruin it so i left it just wide open um if i do start you know as i go when i go camping and want to get a little bit of food in here i will compress it down but i didn't want to store the sleeping bag in the compression because it ruins the bag it kind of uh destroys the filling and then when you try to unfold it it's all warped so i just if you store your bag for long periods of time, just let it be free. And then the compression sack will make this, you know, much, much smaller. I'm not sure where uh, my, com com this is, this is a, this is the compression sack here where I'll put the sleeping bag and then that'll go down to about a third of this, uh, of the volume. And here is the, the tent, two person, probably could fit three in an emergency situation. Um, I like one man tents, uh, and then you can sleep two people in, like if it is a survival scenario, I had a one man tent and it slept two people pretty well. Uh, but I just decided this time to go with a two man 
just in case. This is kind of a sort of a two-man emergency scenario. Um, two people could could do this and survive. Ultimately, you would want the other person would want their own bedroll, sleeping bag, and pillow. You know, but like I said, in a survival situation, you know, you can't be too picky. I don't know what this is. Some kind of, a, I think this is a towel, survival towel, a quick drying towel. Uh, here is a, um, this is a, a liner for the sleeping bag. So when you take a liner and you put it in your sleeping bag, you can raise your temperature by 10 or 20 degrees sometimes. It really, just the smallest, thinnest uh, the liner can actually create like a pocket of warm air. So it's really, it's such a small thing to have. Like even just sleeping here, uh, the first night, it got cold. It was hot during the day, but it got really cold at night it's up in the mountains. And so, um, you know, something like this, it woke me up because it was so cold. I, I did okay. I mean, I don't mind. It was okay. Then last night, I just put a layer of clothing on and some socks because I usually sleep naked. And I did much better. I put on a long sleeve shirt with a hoodie and socks and the rest of me was naked. I can't really wear anything in the midsection. Otherwise, the, everything gets all tangled up. So it was just that extra layer of that extra shirt that I had on and the socks gave me a much better night's sleep last night. Here is a um, emergency tarp and poncho. Good thing to have for such a small thing. It can be very useful. You never know what the heck's going to happen out, out in nature. This is at the bottom. And this must be the uh, it's stuck in there for some reason. I don't know what, what's going on here. Oh, I see. Okay, there it is. So this is the uh, this is a camping mat. So that is a self-inflating camping mat. And then it's got a, a, a blow up. So I've got the bedroll, which actually the bedroll, once it's uh, laid out and filled up, slides into the backpack or into the sleeping bag. And so on this sleeping bag, there is actually a sleeve. So that you know how when you're out camping, you kind of roll off your bedroll. This keeps the bedroll um, flush and intact with the sleeping bag. So pretty good system I got there. And I think that's about it. Last but not least, you know, don't want to reveal this too much, but the uh, is the nine millimeter with a clip, full clip, and then... Um, and then a, uh, I've got a box of ammo. So I've probably got about 65 rounds. Um, I think it's probably, I think uh, I'll load up on a couple more boxes because that'd be something that, you know, um, could be very useful in a survival scenario, of course. Um, and I think that's about it. Yeah, so very simple. And it, like I said, it's just the most basic survival stuff right here. Now I will probably go and load it up with food. Obviously right now, you know, in the grocery store um, scenario, we want, you know, fresh food. Uh, but there's a lot of types of things that you can bring for survival. Nuts, seeds, honey is an amazing survival food. A couple tablespoons of honey will get you through another, you know, 10, 15, 20 miles of hiking with a fully loaded pack. You know, so honey is a very high energy, 
concentrated food that will survive cold, survive the heat, survive the wet, as long as it's sealed. So that's another good thing to have. And, uh, you know, obviously other bee products like the bee pollen is also a very good source of the protein. Um, food, though, in my experience, most people don't know where to find food, but I've been kind of studying herbs and uh, I've been able to find wild foods. I have an eye for it where other people, they just don't see it at all. They don't see it at all. They don't know about it. So, you know, some concentrated food sources are very useful, like the honey or nuts or, you know, a dried fruit can also be good. It's not my favorite thing. I, I barely eat any dried fruit in my normal day-to-day. -day. The grocery store, you know, um, the all of the supply lines still functioning, you know. Um, but uh, just ready for anything. And now I knew that when I bought this, at the time, it was inspired by the bug out. It was inspired by, whoa, the world's coming to an end. These people are nuts. You know, our government's nuts. The whole thing is up on its head. And the people around me generally, en masse, I mean, there are some people that are a little bit more aware than others of what's going on. But for the most part, I've realized the masses are completely clueless as to geopolitics and this, uh, you know, many, many, many generations of planning. And it's had several different names, the New World Order, the Great Reset, the World Economic Forum, whatever you want to call it. It's an energy and a consciousness on the planet which appears to be getting more and more desperate because as humanity grows, it's going to be harder and harder to maintain control. And the control always arises out of fear. And so it's just, you'll, you'll survive if you stay in love. But that doesn't mean not to be smart, prepared in the best way that you know how. You know, and so I could survive with this for years with this material here, you know, I could survive for a long time, you know, um, because it's all heavy duty equipment. And, uh, then of course you just make stuff up. It's not like I'm really, I see in my highest vision that everything's going to be fine, but it's fun to play. And now I've got all this equipment. Now I'm going to go out to the forest and I'm going to go camping. So I'm going to break it all in. So this is the first time I saw any of this. Very simple, very basic, but I am uh, excited to do some hiking and some camping and just kind of get away from it all because um, of the disharmony um, of many, many different things in our society. Uh, the Wi-Fi the sprays in the sky, the pollution from the cars, the toxins in the food, the forced medications, and the lack of consciousness of the human beings to know what's going on at all. I mean, it just blows me away. And so I just get, I'm getting more and more quiet about things. You know, I'm not paranoid. I'm not even afraid. It's like, let's go, you know. I'm fine to leave any time, you know. So, but, um, Collectively, if we were a little bit more aware of what was going on, we could stop these encroachments upon liberties. And as the ultimate, the ultimate free spirit, I'm very well in tune with who is trying to control me. The subtle control mechanisms that happen unconsciously between other human beings. And then the overt uh, control mechanisms which have been taking place in society forever to put the minds on a track and keep it there but it's so infinitely expansive in the freedom of mind the freedom of heart the freedom of body to live and love and think and act in a way that suits your own personal private desire for freedom so may you be blessed 20 minutes is legit dtm is out have a great day thanks Adios. 20 minutes.